A little disclaimer at the beginning. My throat is really sore. It's the winter months here in Switzerland and it has gotten really cold. I don't know where I picked this soreness up, but it is what it is and we'll all have to cope with it. What is up, my art liking people? Do you think this intro was a good one? The sentence didn't really flow, wouldn't you say? Right, just because I prepare words to come from my mouth in a manner that everybody can understand doesn't mean it actually sounds good. What would you think if I told you it's the same with drawing and art itself? Because it is. Just like I can say to write words for something, I can draw and render my art piece like Da Vinci and it could still suck if I'm not bringing it in the right order. It won't be good even if they have the right order but the wrong tone. And today you don't need to be creative, just let the information settle in because it's quite hard to understand and even harder to actually use while drawing. This is a very advanced thing and you don't need to keep your eyes on it at all times, you'll just get frustrated, it'll come as time passes. I recommend today is a little bit of a relaxation day in terms of drawing, just sit back and enjoy. Now, today's fundamental is composition and flow. Have you ever looked at a drawing and your eyes automatically went from one point to another? I know you have. You wouldn't lie to a sick person, would you? Because that is what we artists call a good composition and good flow. Now, explaining good composition and flow is a huge thing and would probably take an eternity, so I won't do that. However, I will explain what bad composition and flow is and just give you some examples of good flow and composition, because that is far easier and much more in my skill level of explaining things. Now, a bad composition is, for example, when your eyes cannot really get a grasp on a picture, when too much is going on or too little is even visible. There are some little tricks to get your composition on a good level. One of them is like placing your object of interest into one third of the picture. That one is used a lot in photography. And now that we know what a bad composition looks like, we can go over what bad flow is. It is when your eyes have to work too much to view a picture. If you have an area with high detail, your eye will automatically be drawn to it. With characters, it's also the face area where our eyes automatically go, since we instinctively look each other in the eyes. Flow means guiding your eyes through a piece of art, and if your eyes don't know where to look, they will try to perceive it all at once, which doesn't really ruin your piece, but it doesn't make it pop as well. Carefully select your areas with high details so your eyes will move smoothly over the piece and get a glimpse at everything. If you're really skilled in that, you can even make major mistakes and almost nobody notices because our brain tends to be blind to whatever is going on outside of the flow zone, at least if we're just looking for a brief amount of time. This picture was posted in our Discord by Crazy Alex. It's the result of day 5 from the Advent calendar. When looking at it, you most likely look here first thing and then wander upwards to the top of the building. Now, before I showed you the picture, just briefly, and how many of you noticed that the houses in the outer corners of the drawing are not aligning with the vanishing point? Probably not many, because they are out of the more detailed flow zone that our eyes are automatically drawn to. It's a perfect and simplistic example of how the flow zone works and how much of an impact the flow zone can have. That's the end of day 11. Let the information settle in and relax for the day. Sometimes it's good to just have time to do nothing. I'll see you guys tomorrow and happy relaxation.